Sure. On this week's World Menu, take a cuisine tour of Arabian Nights. We introduce to you the world of Middle Eastern cuisine, a true feast for the taste buds. I mean, look at this. Put your face aside. Like this. I feel like a I'm fish known to protect and strengthen the liver, codfish. We'll show you some special ways to prepare codfish. Stay tuned for Healthy Kitchen. Dubai is very famous for being a luxurious city built in the middle of the desert. And aside from the ongoing competition of the new businesses and brand names, there's a new competition stirring up here. Many people in Dubai can try the wide array of foods and cuisines from around the world. And that adds to the charming aspect of the international city of Dubai. And if you were to go to Dubai right now, you would absolutely have to have a taste of the Middle Eastern cuisine. But if Dubai is a little bit too far out of reach, then we have something for you on today's world menu. World Menu. The endless desert and deadly heat, the camels and goats. But if you think this is it, you're mistaken. The Middle East boasts a blossoming metropolitan culture and the world's attention is focused on its new oasis. You may think this rough terrain doesn't offer a variety of ingredients, but the local cuisine is as rich and colourful as any. Middle Eastern cuisine has captivated taste buds around the world with its rich flavours. Let's take a closer look. Islamic culture encompasses 22 nations and nationalities. But Middle Easterners have always had a sense of unity within their culture, and their culinary culture significantly enhances this unity. It's easy to notice the popular cuisine enjoyed by Middle Easterners if you take a stroll downtown. This consistently popular dish is called a falafel. The falafel resembles a croquet and is a popular street food in the Middle East. Place the stuffing inside the bread and roll it up. It's ready in a matter of minutes. It's cheap and convenient to eat and many people make a meal of it. Of course, it's popular with restaurant goers as well. What's the secret to this delicious flavour? Falafel is made by creating round dough with steamed beans and frying them until they're crispy. It's enjoyed in many Middle Eastern countries, including Jordan, and this is what makes it so savoury. What thing is this? Uh, chickpeas. Chickpeas. This for hummus. Uh, Our chef shows us the secret ingredient. They're Egyptian beans called chickpeas. The round body and beak-like tip give it its name. In the Middle East, people favour beans and foods high in protein, which is how such bean dishes became so popular. And salads are a Middle Eastern staple. Parsley with its characteristic scent, chopped tomatoes and onions are mixed together. Sprinkle some lemon juice, olive oil and some sauces and you have your widely popular Arabian style salad, tabouli. It's a perfect salad filled with natural and fresh flavours. To taste it properly, first hold a good amount of bread, then place a piece of falafel on top of it. 
sprinkle on the sauce of your choice and enjoy it with the tabbouleh salad. Mmm, the flavours delight you in every way. Falafel would be number one vegetarian meal for the Arab people. And it's quite famous in the States, Canada and Australia because there is many Arab immigrants. It's very healthy, it's very nutritious and very low calories, so it's very, very healthy meal. It's a busy hour at a restaurant and this dish enjoyed by many here is a popular Saudi Arabian food called kapsa. It's made with meat and rice. The meat is a steamed mix of spices, lamb and chicken, which have been specially prepared with a halal method. The long and thin rice is stir-fried with vertically chopped carrots. Some people eat the rice and meat together, scooping them up with a spoon. But if you want to eat it the right way, you have to use your hands and dip it in the sauce. Saudi people like always the kapsa. Kapsa means rice with meat. We call it kapsa. So uh, this, this is the main meal that we are all the time use, uh, eat it in the, our lunch. Spicy seasoned meat and a hearty serving of rice. Kapsa is often served at buffets and is a representative Saudi Arabian dish. Lean lamb or goat meat is now deliciously roasted in a fire. Just as the seasoning is well simmered into the meat, yellow or red rice is served generously on a large plate. The tenderly cooked meat is placed on the rice to complete this dish of mandi. It's an essential party dish, always served at great parties in the Middle East. The rich flavours and nutrients of the delicious looking meat and rice envelope the senses. The spices keep the food from getting greasy. That's good, lose all the oil. That's mean low fat. And like this, I'm like it. And do now eat this uh, meals, I'm feeling um, not uh, heavy. The delicious flavors keep first time consumers of Middle Eastern food coming back. Grains harvested from rich soil and bean dishes made with fresh vegetables fit perfectly with a global healthy cuisine trend. The combination of rice and meat offers an ethnic twist for curious foreign palates. Uh, no, this one, this one is uh, chicken couscous. Yes. It tastes wonderful. Do you want to try some? <laughs> It's very good. I think it's a little bit spicy, but it's not too spicy. Yes. As followers of the Islamic faith are prohibited from drinking liquor, a rich tea drinking culture has flourished instead. Black tea is one of the most popular teas. It serves as a dessert to clean the palate. Shisha, which are water pipes, a combination of cigarettes and pieces of coal, is enjoyed by many. The street cafes are filled with tea drinkers and water pipe smokers. But there's another Middle Eastern specialty loved by food connoisseurs. The round broiler wrapped with meat rotates slowly. The cooked meat is thinly sliced for none other than kebabs. A generous amount of thinly sliced meat is placed on the thin pita bread. Just head on down to the salad bar to add your choice of vegetables, tomatoes and sauces.
Kebabs are often enjoyed as takeout food. It's the equivalent of the American hamburger and now enjoyed all over the world. I, I have had kebabs for 15 years now. In Germany and in like in, uh, in Greece and in Korea, but Turkey also. It was back in the days of the Osman Empire that the originally Turkish kebabs were introduced into the Arabian world. It has since been one of the most popular lamb meat dishes among Arabians. And from the lamb meat, we make different, many kinds of uh, dishes like kebab, shawarma, like uh, barbecue, lamb, you know, lamb masala, many things we eat. There are numerous types of kebabs, and the charbroiled lamb kebabs served on skewers are favored by many for their clean, non-oily taste. Roasted lamb's leg, which is cooked on a grill, is equally popular for its spicy and juicy flavors. Cooking methods that make the most of an ingredient's original flavors and minimal seasoning are what make Middle Eastern cuisine so popular as healthy choices around the world. Between Eastern and Western worlds, the spices and ingredients from both worlds come together to create a distinct experience of flavors. People who are tired of eating fast food and the same old dishes should definitely keep their eyes out for the fresh twists in Middle Eastern fare. Arabian food is, is very rich flavour, very rich taste um, and it has a lot of variety. Um, so lots of different meats, um, great vegetarian food, nice bread, good salads uh, and also good sweets so I like, uh, like the taste. No matter what your language or background, you'll blend in right away. The moment you're served healthy, rich food, boundaries vanish and you become one with Middle Eastern culture. Middle Eastern fare is a popular and familiar face in the world of cuisine. Healthy Kitchen. Hi, welcome to Jake's Healthy Kitchen, where we use only the best of the best ingredients. And what is today's healthy ingredient? Well, it's a fish that has a huge mouth and a huge appetite. And it also served as a very faithful source of food for the Vikings when they reached American soil before Columbus. And it's popular in Europe, but also in Korea as well. Hmm, what is it? Well, here is this week's ingredients. Here is this week's ingredient. Codfish is known for its vivacious appetite and large size exceeding 90 centimeters. It's also widely known as a nutritious fish especially good for your liver. It's enjoyed as sashimi, in soup or fried, steamed and grilled. All parts of the fish can be used in various dishes. Let's take a look at some special ways to cook codfish. Okay, now we're going to introduce a chef who's going to show us the true taste of codfish. Come on, chef, join us. Come on. Good afternoon, Jake. Hey, good afternoon. How are you? Christian? Yes, that's okay. right. Okay. We have some fresh codfish over here, and boy, look at the head and the mouth. It's huge. Is that Humongous. Big? I mean, look at this. Put your face aside. Like this? Huh? That's Stop it. Say, Stop man. it. I'm not going to do that anymore. <laughs> But why did you choose the codfish for today's healthy ingredients? I like to work with the codfish because it's one of the fish which can combine with many ingredients as a garnishes. First. Oh, okay. And as well different varieties of sauces. Oh. And you can apply different kind of technique of cooking from grilling. Not right. grilling, grilling would be more for salted cod, but okay. for roasting, pan frying and steaming are the best technique for roasting that kind of pan fish. frying and steaming. Yeah, that's oh, right. I see. Let's say, you know, you're looking for codfish 
um, to cook at your fish market, local fish market, how would you select the ideal codfish for you, for yourself? Well, when going to the market, when we look for a fish and the sign of freshness and quality fish, we first always look for having a nice skin, shiny skin. Oh, wow, okay. look how it's just shining off the shiny light. Skin. Ooh. When okay. touching the fish on this part, it must be bouncing back. Okay, it wow. shows firmness on the flesh. It's bouncing right back right. at me. Oh my, look at this. It's pretty firm. But don't, don't pray too much. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm not going to break the bone of anything, don't worry. Poor codfish. Step one, codfish and mango tartar. So we're going to start to marinate the fish. Okay. So I leave the fish here first, and we're going to prepare the marinade. If you want to give me the bowl there, you're going to help yes, me. sir. I think you're going to be a great help to me. Really? How many bowls do you need? Just one well, for the I'll moment. Two, just in case, because I'm a very good helper. <laughs> so we're going to move on using... Yuzu. Let's cut it in half. I will okay. squeeze anyway after I will pass into the CF. Oh, we just, wow. Okay. So okay, I will, I'm going to take a little bit of pink pepper. Pink pepper, okay. Crushed. Crushed the okay, pink pepper. The pink knife. pepper. So you can smell already. Mm. These subtle flavors is coming out from the peppers. Yeah, White and, pepper. Uh, Christian. And I do have yeah. a little bit of you my nose, right? Of, uh, pepper. <laughs> Look. If you're watching on oh, Christian's wife, don't get jealous. I'm just trying to help him out. <laughs> okay. So wow. I will move this like this, just seasoning. Now we're going to cut the cold fish in dice. Oh, dice okay. Shape. In dice shape? Yes, and then we will marinate into our marinade, which is previously done. Oh, okay. Try to be regular, okay, into the... So now we're just... Mixing it in the marin we're marinating it now. Pre or sitting in the marinade, you need to season with salt. Okay. okay. So now, what do we do with this? This one, I will cover it. Cover it. Right, and I keep inside our fridge. And uh, tomorrow, after tomorrow, I can use it again. Okay, you could use it again. Yes. Okay. Chop up some angelica leaves and green onions. Season them with cooking wine, pepper, and olive oil, and mix with mangoes. Your tartar is ready. Next is the garnish. Lightly roast the mangoes. Clean and trim the head of the asparagus and slice the stems to sprinkle with olive oil. Can I try this? I've never tried this. I feel like I'm hitting the whipped cream. I'm not whipping it. More. More. That's it. That's it. I'm going to try a little bit more yuzu. Okay. Okay. With your fish. With the fish, okay. Yeah. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. But easy. Easy, okay. Well, show us. Show us how easy it is, chef. <laughs> so, a little bit of mango, of cream. Set our fish. Codfish, yes. Mango tata. It's all the colors. So we move like this. Okay. And I will finish also the just flower. This color is beautiful. And this is our appetizer. Wow, it's done. This doesn't even look like food. The codfish smells fruity with the citron sauce and is a perfect match for the sweet and bitter mango tartar. Your appetizer is complete. Codfish is considered one of the healthiest foods for your liver. Why? Well, to revive the cells in your liver, you need a high amount of protein and very little fat. And well, codfish contains 19% protein and only 0.5% fat. And it also contains a rich amount of amino acids, which is very essential. And this helps for the composition of glutathione. And also, that contributes to the toxicating effect. Wow, codfish is really good for you and your liver. Step two, healthy steamed codfish.
So we're going to have a codfish, and this time it's not raw, it's going to be steam. It's going to be steam with some green tea, wild green tea leaves from Boson. Okay. Green tea leaves, all right. Just let's that this morning. Green tea leaves. Let's put it right here. We'll be in a salted water on a stove. Salted water. And we're going to prepare that infusion. We're going to maintain a temperature of 80 degrees, about 80 degrees, and it will be a slow steaming. Okay. Where do we start? So I'm going to add a nice handful. Nice, a big tea. handful. And we're going to prepare our codfish. Okay. How do we prepare the codfish? Of our fish. Okay, about 180 gram. I'm going to season and I'm going to set the fish skin on the top and place skin side up. Um, yes. yes, okay. Right. And then and then put the lid on top? Yes, the lid on top. All right, voila. Because I know there must be a healthy point to steaming the codfish. Some, some of the fish are good on steaming because it, is, it give about the texture of the fish. Especially for the codfish, it has a very flaky. Flaky. Okay. It's very f flaky flesh, okay? It's like a millefeuille. Ah, okay. Leaf by leaves. Oh, okay, okay. So, w as a pleasure to take the fish, it's very moist, very tender. You take it, okay? And when you have your palate, you feel that tenderness. It's, good. it's good as uh, steaming. Oh. I prefer steaming cold fish and pan frying than braising, actually. Making the sauce. Add curry paste to the stir-fried onions and garlic. Simmer in coconut milk and add flavors with cream and pistachio paste. Once the sauce is smooth and thick, run it through sieve. How do you know if it's ready? Okay. Now the fish I'm going to touch like this, and you can see. No. When you see this white juice going through the codfish, that means that you, it's a sign that your codfish is cooked. Okay. Then we move with tofu. the tofu. Do you know how to say tofu in Korean? Mm, I forgot, sorry. You forgot? Yes. I forgot too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pass through tofu the, the tofu egg white. in egg white and I just wrap it like this. The bonito will give a nice lightly smoked around the tofu and, and fries. It's, it's going to give a nice combination with the curry. Okay. Right? And I will fry my tofu. Wow. Fry it in the oil. Fry in the oil. Okay. To keep a nice brownish color. Okay. Okay, nicely cooked. Oh, okay, cause well, you can see the juice oozing out of the fish. Wow! Right. Cube tofu, fry with bonito. The coconut cream, oh. and I will put this on the top. Huh? Ah! Oh, you're funny. Ah! You're funny. Okay, come on. Oh, I almost believed it. Yes. I almost believed it. Oh, you, Christian, you. Oh, no. Oh, come on, for real. What is this? So I'm going to show you. I have to show you how to hit. Actually, okay. actually, before you're going to eat your fish, then you're going to eat like this, and you're going to spray over your tofu, the coconut milk. This is your seasoning. Is your condiment sauce. Oh, okay, before you eat the fish. And before eating the, the tofu. I mean, tofu, yeah. Oh. A triangle of green tea scented codfish with tofu and gnocchi mushrooms. What will this dish taste like with a touch of sauce? Okay, chef, now we have the finished second dish here. Looks great. So, can we taste it now? Yes, we can oh. taste it. We have those little fancy pipettes. Right, which is a reduction of uh, coconut milk. The, the last one's mine, the last one's mine. Oh. Coconut cream. The last one's mine. I'll do torso. Oh, okay, I'll do, I'll do it tofu. Okay, cool. Should I do it now? Do not hit. <laughs> the hit? <laughs> Here we go. You used up all the coconut oil, chef. 
I mean the coconut um cream. I can give you some. You can train at home if you want. Okay, fine. No coconut cream for stuff. Okay, so let's start. Got fish, grease. Hmm. Very light. Mm. Delicate. Mm mm mm. Mm. That's fantastic. That's good. That's really good. So that garnish is goes well with the curry. And the curry. And the coconut is balancing the, the flavors the between flavor the curry, curry and, and the bonito. And the curry, it just complements the fish so well. Back in the days, people would always travel because countries would fight other countries for land and resources. But in modern times, people travel to try the fabulous cuisines of the world. And today, we had a very delicious cuisine. Thank you to Christian. And um, I hope you enjoyed our tour today. And maybe it could give you some ideas to incorporate in your own home-cooked meals. Well, that's it for today. And I'll see you again next time. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.